So Cursor are back again this week with more updates. It's kind of hard to keep track of how fast this team moves. If you're a designer, developer, or a product manager, entrepreneur, I think it's a series of releases that is really worth paying attention to. And something really cool in the form of a page layout editor. Now Cursor put up their own video on this and one of the comments genuinely made me laugh. Congratulations, you now have WordPress. And yeah, if you take it at face value, it kind of is very much like what we get in any kind of no-code builder in WordPress, Elementor, Framer, or Webflow, which I actually think is genius, and I'm gonna tell you why. And if that wasn't enough, we've also had a drop from OpenAI in the form of GPT 5.2. So we're gonna check it out and see how it compares against my current favorite development models. So let's take a look at 5.2. Now we've got all our benchmarks here, but to be honest, I'm hardly even paying attention to these kind of benchmarks anymore. I think there's a little bit of number fudging going on and some uh, graph crimes as we call them. So one of the interesting benchmarks to pay attention to is the SWE Bench Pro. If you take a look here, you can see we have Opus 4.5 in the first spot and we have Claude 4.5 in the second spot, followed by Gemini. And then even Claude 4 is down here But before we hit GPT-5 high, which is at 41%. If we look at OpenAI's release on 5.2, you'll see the same benchmark here, SWE Bench Pro, but it's saying it's hitting a 55.6%. So that would actually put it well clear of the rest of the pack somewhere up around here. But I think if you care to look closely, you'll see something that's a little bit different. We have GPT 5.2 with a 42% accuracy on SWE Bench Pro, and that's just a 1% increase from what it was before. But what they're publishing and showing on the table up above is this number here, 56%. But what they're not saying here is this is given more thinking time. So essentially, it's like giving the five competing models a test and giving them five minutes to do that test. Whereas in the case of GPT-5, they're giving it an extra 20 minutes to actually complete the test. So it's not really a fair comparison. So in fairness to the model, one eval, it seems to have a significant jump on its ability to do economic work over long thinking times. So essentially just giving it various different types of tasks that a human would do and how it performs against that. So there's a significant jump there that's really quite interesting. With Ella Marina, the models are anonymized and people try to do tasks with them and then they vote on the model they think does the best. So in that place so far, now it's very early, is scoring in second place. So how does it compare on pricing? So pricing is getting more confusing all the time. There's so many different variations of models. We have Instant, we have Chat, we have Pro, but in general, I'm just kind of comparing them basically here. So Opus 4.5, the most powerful model, the one I use for planning and design, uh, is still by far the most expensive. And GPT 5.2 falls in here at around $15 for combined input and output across the average. Now there is a GPT 5.2 Pro, which is dramatically more expensive, but these are the ones you'll probably be using for software development. For a million tokens of output for 5.2 and $168 for 1 million token output on the Pro version. I can safely say you won't be building your to-do app with this model. So next up, we have some new features from Cursor. So, so let's see if they're gonna make our life a whole lot easier when it comes to building out apps. So first up, we have the browser layout and style editor. So I could just open it with this little button up here. So the first thing that's good is I've got a component selector here. So now when I want to chat with my, my AI about a particular section that I wanna change, let's say I wanna change the color of this div here. I select that and down here in my chat window, Cursor knows exactly what element I'm just about to talk about instead of having to take a generalized look at the whole page. Now, if I'm a skilled developer or a designer, it's probably gonna be faster for me to rapidly jump down here and just change the background color here to whatever I want rather than speaking or typing out a prompt and waiting for the eye to change that. And if you're using Tailwind, you have access to all your brand colors here. If you wanna be more granular, you've even got the CSS listed here and you can make whatever changes that you want. 
So this kind of feature just makes it a whole lot easier to work alongside AI. You can be much more prescriptive in what you're telling the AI to work on. And if you have the skill set, you can start to make rapid changes yourself that might take the AI that little bit longer. So I think these kind of features really play into a shift I'm seeing in product development. So here's why I think Cursor is doing something really interesting here, and which means probably a big change for the current way that we do things. So right now we have a product manager, a designer, and a developer. But with AI and with the kind of tools that Cursor offers, we're starting to see a kind of a blend. The product manager and the designer can now actually create initial prototypes before they even go to the development. And this really speeds up the development life cycle. You can imagine if you're an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, or somebody who wants to create an idea. In the past, you had to go through that long cycle of development. But now I can kind of come up with an idea for a product, work with AI, and rapidly get it built. With a tool like Cursor as a designer, I previously created my design in Figma and then had to hand it off to a developer for it to work. Now a designer, uh, now as a designer, I can prompt AI to do the first draft. I can then work and iterate using a tool like this on the design and create a prototype to test it out and send it back to the product manager instead of a designer and a product manager asking a developer to move something three pixels to the left, they can actually do that and just send it as a pull request and the development team can focus on whatever is important on the issue backlog. Another feature from Cursor is their debug mode, which is really quite welcome. So down here on the right hand side in our chat box, we have this new debug mode. So you can just select it here by clicking debug. So you probably haven't developed with AI for long if you haven't come across some challenging issues. Current models are really good at finding those issues straight away and fixing them. And sometimes we face more challenging bugs. And typically how I work with these more challenging issues is just a simple series of steps. And what Cursor have done is basically codified those series of steps into a system prompt that you can access via debug. I don't have access to that prompt, but essentially I've been using something very similar myself in my own prompt setup. So this is essentially what the debugger is doing. So when you've got debug switched on, it's basically sending a system prompt that's saying, okay, let's take a look at the issue that's pasted in by the user. So let's see, we've got an error here appearing in the console. I would just basically take that, I would paste it in here, and then basically run this debug, debug mode. Now the agent can actually see the error that's coming through in the terminal. So then what we want to do is instead of just jumping in, we want to search the code base and understand the issue first before implementing any of the changes. This is important because it could be a new conversation and the agent needs to get a feeling for what's going on. Sometimes if I'm facing a challenging bug, I might actually switch to a completely different model for a different perspective. And again, it's not gonna know what's going on from previous conversations, so it needs to be primed and understand the code base. Next up, what I'd naturally do as a developer is I would add more logging. So if that's in Next.js or Python, it's basically just adding some console logs so I can get more information about exactly what's happening. And we can also get debug mode to access the terminal, to view the logs. Even now with the new browser tool and cursor, have it take a look at the browser to view the console logs and the network profiling. So essentially when you're running this debug mode, it's doing something very similar to this. But if you're using Claude code or something else like that, you could just decide to use the prompt like this and then save it as a cursor or a Claude command. Now this prompt manager is new, it's something I developed myself. It's just available within my community. But if you jump onto the newsletter, I'm gonna be releasing it to everybody in the next couple of weeks completely for free as a Christmas present and a thank you for subscribing to the channel. But wait, there's more. Oh God, that's corny. Anyway, so yesterday what I did was launched a web app launch kit and this is also completely free. So it's got everything you need to set up your first web app project. We've got Next.js, we have Clerk for authentication so users can log in. Tailwind, we've got Prisma to manage your database, Neon for a Postgres database. It's even been updated to the latest version of Next.js to solve the recent security issue that happened during the week. So another nice addition this week is multi-agent judging. So what the heck is this? Well, basically it boils down to this little thumb mark here. So in case you missed it, and I've covered it in my last couple of videos, Cursor has this really cool feature where let's say you're working on a design or a new feature or a refactor of some kind. You can actually assign multiple different models 
to carry out a first pass at that. So we switch over here to work tree mode. And now what I can do is pick multiple different models or even multiples of each one of those models to work on a particular solution. So if you want to get a really good idea of how that works, I've put together this video here, which actually is a really great starting point for anybody working with Git and AI. Also from yesterday, 25 cursor tips and an introduction to that starter kit that I just talked about previously. So when you ask multiple models to solve a problem, you get an interface that looks a little bit like this. So you, so you can see there's four different models and you can, you can switch between them. But what Cursor is doing now with multi-agent judging, it's going to evaluate the outcomes of these models and give you its judgment on which the best one is. Personally, I'm a little bit skeptical about this one. I don't highly rate LLMs for being able to judge LLMs, but I'm going to test it over the next week and let you know how I get on. So if you haven't been using plan mode in Cursor, where have you been? It's absolutely amazing. It's pretty much replaced most types of spec driven development for me. I just put in my initial prompt and Cursor will go ahead and number one, ask me a couple of questions to clarify and then number two, create a plan. But then I can go ahead and edit that plan before it actually gets pushed into agent mode to be built out. One more nice improvement is the fact that plans are now saved uh, as files to disk and that you can edit them. So this is a question that came up in my community quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. People were asking about where these plan files get saved. Now, what was kind of annoying was those plans were uh, ephemeral. They just disappeared afterwards and you didn't know where they went. But now they're actually saved to disk by default and you can edit them after the fact, which I think is really helpful. This is your friendly reminder to stop looking at YouTube and go and actually build something. You have the capability, you have these tools, just get started, just get building. If you want some accountability or feedback on your ideas, drop them in the comments down below. I'm a product manager with 20 years of experience and I'll give you as much feedback as I can. Thanks guys and see you next week.